You're listening to the Staging Sips Podcast with Lori Fisher. This podcast is dedicated to helping real estate staging CEOs build healthy businesses that grow, flow, and thrive. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I am so happy to be with you as always. And this week, we are diving into one of the ways that we use Google Drive inside of our business. And then next week, we'll do even more. But this week, I wanted to share with you how we use Google Drive to create a training library for your team. So it's kind of like a bonus Jonas episode. You're getting a two for one, as it were, in the episode this week. So I'm sure for those of you who have been building your business, even for just a minute, you've probably heard the expression uh, that you are the bottleneck in your business, meaning that all decisions need to be funneled through you, All knowledge is held by you. And if you aren't available to answer questions or take action, that you can really stop the progress of your business. And this is a real problem if you want to grow your staging business and if you want to serve more people at a higher and more efficient level. So one of the things that can really help you begin to shed that bottleneck status in your business over time is to create a team training library. You have a lot of knowledge about your business and how you like things done that you really want your team to know and they will want slash need to know. A lot of times our team doesn't want to operate outside of any kind of what they think you might want or um, desire inside of your business. So they may not take action, not because they're not capable, but because they just want to make sure they're doing what you want. And so, again, a team training library is a way for you to begin to get all of that out of your head and get it organized. And so today we're going to walk through some a couple of easy tools that you can use and the way you can start developing your team training library. And if you are in our Accelerate program, you are so completely crazy lucky because I have added access to our team training library in there so that our Accelerate students get to see exactly how we set it up, exactly the the tutorials that I have provided for my team with the tools that we have so that they have a template for all of their own team training libraries. They can even take what I've done and download it and use it for their own businesses. So if you are not an Accelerate, if you are possibly thinking of growing your team, hiring a team, or your current team you think could be functioning so much better, and this is something that you don't want to spend a lot of time thinking about, Accelerate does it for you. It's extraordinarily valuable. So um, if you're not in Accelerate, head to the link in the show notes and go learn all about it. Enrollment is open for you always when you are ready, when you're ready to stop spinning your wheels, when you're ready to get out of the overwhelm of the Accelerate phase of business and troubleshoot it. Um, Join us. Okay. All right. So What let's dive into first, like what kinds of content goes into your team library? So as you're starting to think that you'd like to create one of these, and I would say don't start creating a team training library right away in your business. For that that growth business owner, you're really want to I want you to listen to this as this is something ahead of you. But if you're in growth, your whole job right now is to be getting your name out there, marketing your business and learning how you do things. You don't want to develop a team training library too early because by doing that, you will probably have to change a lot of things because you're going to learn that maybe your processes could be better. So you really want to wait until you have really established a pattern to how you do things. And that's when you want to start creating your team training library, okay? So I don't want you to to spend time on this while you should be out marketing if you're that growth business owner. Okay. So what kinds of content goes into your team training library? First of all, processes that happen over and over and over again. So when you get to this accelerate phase and you're starting to onboard team members, um, there's probably a process that you go through each time you onboard those team members or information that they need to have. So rather than doing that in person manually, you can create training tutorials around that. You can think about how to's to help your team find what they need or how to use your software that you have in your business that they will need to use in their role. How to's about the steps of your process. So if you've got a multi-step process that you go through, so for us in styling evaluations, for example, the how to's would be 
How do we um, use our our note taking app uh, Go Canvas? How do we use that? How do we submit? Who needs to receive the the report? What do they do with that report once they're finished with it? Where do they put their before photos? All of that good stuff. Like it's all in there for us. Um, then what about it, uh, when a team member comes to you with a question that everybody should know the answer to? That's a great time to create a tutorial. So if somebody isn't clear how to do something and you realize it may be a step that you've missed in your process, that's a wonderful time to create a tutorial. Um, when you are the one who's currently doing a particular role, for example, like client onboarding, and you want to delegate it, it's a great time to start recording the steps of your process so that you can be prepared to delegate. One of the things that we want to make sure is when we go to delegate that we actually have at least a framework and so the ways that we like to have things done, and we want to have that documented somewhere. So this is a great time for that. Anything that might be helpful with a visual or has multiple steps that might be confusing and you want to share um, the visual or a video walkthrough of it, that's a great piece of content to create for your team training library. So you can start thinking about all of those things when you are creating your team training library. So where do you start then? Once you start thinking about all that, you really want to start by creating, I say in Google Drive, because it's cloud-based, it's accessible for everybody, a team training library folder. And this is where you're going to brainstorm those things that you think your current or future team will need to understand better. And again, go back to those questions. What are the processes that happen over and over again? What are the how-tos how about how to deliver a particular service or use your software or the, the um, things that you do over and over again that you want to begin to hand off? Like Start brainstorming all of those things and put them in an outline. And what you'll see is that you've probably got some main buckets, right? Like, so it might be a uh, main bucket might be team onboarding, or it might be how to use this software, uh, or it might be um, all the steps of your vacant staging process, or how to use, you know, like Google Calendar, for example, which was in our episode last week. So you'll start to see those buckets and then you can create subfolders for your training topics. Now, one of the things that I do inside of Google Drive is I put numbers in front of things because I want them to be in order, um, uh, in a certain order. So like, for example, if you had a folder that was welcome to our, you know, our company, in our case, RHI, welcome to RHI, um, that wouldn't be alphabetically because Google organizes things alphabetically, that would alphabetically not be in the place that I want it. So I would name that 01 welcome to RHI so that that's the first folder that is in the, the um, inside the main folder. So I use a number system a lot inside of Google Drive. And I totally recommend that for organizing your own files no matter where they are, because again, it just helps put things in the order that you want them. So for let's use that example then um, for the welcome to RHI. Maybe that's a subtopic that I have inside of our main training library folder. So it would 01 welcome to RHI. And then I would have 01 introduction to our mission and values. Now you do not, if you are you know, doing this for your business and you haven't hired anybody yet, I don't want you to get too tripped up on some of these things like mission and values. You don't necessarily need them and you don't necessarily need them completely dialed in, but you might want like, here's our philosophy. Here's how we think about our clients, how we care for our team, how, you know, that kind of thing. It can be very much like that because you do want to set the tone if you're bringing on new team members in this example. O2 would be O2, what apps to add to your phone and how to do it. And you can create tutorials about this. And I'll tell you the tools that we use in just a minute to do this. Um, another thing might be O3, RHI social media to follow, right? You want your new team members to follow you on social so that they are getting you notified when you guys post, your company posts something so that they can share it on their social media feeds. O4, how to sign up for the RHI newsletter. So these are exact things that we have in our client onboarding is we want our team members to sign up for our newsletter list so that they are receiving all of the communications that we send out to our clients. So this is just one example of what you can do inside of your 
training libraries. And again, if you want an example of this and a, a really good one, join us in Accelerate because you get access to Rethink Home Interiors training library. Um, so then how do you create these things? So I love, like I said, I, I prefer using video for a lot of things because it just makes it easier, I think, for people to see things. Sometimes it, it, if somebody's interface is a little bit different, it might be confusing. But I have found in general that Loom, uh, that creating videos is really the best way to communicate a lot of information. So I started to mention it, which was Loom. I love Loom. Loom.com. Here's why I love Loom. Here's my ode to Loom, as it were. Um, I love all of the ways that it can record you. It can record you just face to face. So if you want to give a personal introduction to welcome to our team, I'm so happy you've joined us, blah, blah, blah. Like you can do this even before they their official start date, create a loom where it's like we're looking forward to you, you know, starting soon, blah, 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 whatever. So it can just record you. It, then it can record just your screen. So if you only want to record what's on the screen and you don't want any of you on that, it can do that as well. It can record both. It can record you in a little dot in the corner and it can record your screen. Now, just FYI for you to know, I record this podcast every week in Loom because you can download all kinds of things and for me, the biggest thing is that you can re-record easily. So if you flub up and you need to start all over, it's super easy to just start re-recording from scratch there. I started by using Zoom to create um, you know, our company training videos, but it was very difficult to start over if you made a mistake. So Loom is absolutely the way to go for that. So yes, you get to record you, your screen, and you can record both. You can name the file exactly what you want. So as soon as you're done recording, it will pop up for you and you can change the name of the recording to whatever you want it to be. You can organize your videos on the Loom platform in a nice folder as well. So that way you don't have a sea of videos, kind of like on YouTube where you can create different um, channels. It, it's very easy to create a folder that is like training folder and put all of your training videos in there right on Loom um, to warehouse those for, for your future. Um, you can download your videos very easily. You can set share them by just sharing the link to them. And best is that there are free plans. So if you're only going to record um, short snippet videos that are under five minutes and you're only going to record like 25 a month, you can do that. But the paid plan is only $12.50 a month. So I'm on the $12.50 plans because I record this podcast on it every week and these are always longer than five minutes. But just so that you know you've got that available to you. And then you can also record screen capture on your phone. So stepping away from Loom for a minute and into the other thing, sometimes like, for example, we want to share how to use an app on our phone or how to upload the app onto your phone and what to do you can screen capture on your phone. And you can do this on Apple or Android or Google phones. There's a way to do that on all of it. So you can literally record your screen and it will record you talking as well. So you can narrate your video and say, okay, open up the you know, Google, uh, Google Drive app. And on the phone, you know, once you do that, you're going to navigate to this folder. And in this folder, you will find this thing and you can just show, you know, clicking on this button. It's great. So you can create little screen capture videos like that on your phone as well. And you can upload them to your Google Drive folder. So once you've got that structure of the Google Drive folder, then it's, it becomes very easy for you to create these quick loom videos, quick screen capture videos, and then upload them to the folder. And then again, number them so that they are in order of how you want them to be done. So um, it's all organized. So those are the, the two main ways that I have created my team training videos. And again, if you're an Accelerate, you'll see that inside of the, um, and what it actually looks like on the kind of the back end um, to have those done in the Accelerate, um, in our team training library for RHI. So 
I do want to share with you, though, some mindset stuff, because when, when we do anything in our business and we get any new tool, I want to just focus our minds a little bit. The first is, again, when it comes to the team training library, I recommend fractions of actions. Start with things that are the easiest for you to document. Don't maybe your vacant staging process and how you like to style coffee tables or beds or all that, you know, that's maybe something you develop over time. Start with the smallest, easiest things, the quick wins for you, because it may take you a little bit of time to get comfortable with the recording platforms and, you know, or Google Drive if you don't currently use that to house your folders. Give yourself some grace that this may take longer than you expect. Don't feel like you need to create the huge library all at one time. Again, kind of like your processes may change and evolve over time. You want to really focus on the things that you know you have dialed in, that you have the tool that you love to use for it, that you're likely not going to change that tool. So I didn't create for us a, t- a team training topic around our how we were doing our styling evaluation reports until I felt like we had the system that I really, really loved. It was clunky, you know, before, and I had to teach everybody manually the clunky process, which was definitely a pain. But if I had created the team training library and had forgotten to update it, then (laughs) as as what happens in business is that sometimes you forget to update things. Um, It would have kind of been a waste of my time to have have created it before I felt like I really landed on the tool that was going to work for us. Um, keep a running list of ideas, like keep that brainstorm document in your team training folder so that you or your team can add topics when you find you need them because things will arise all the time. Even when you've been doing something for a long time, introducing a new team member a lot of times reveals new steps to the process that may need to be recorded and they are for your future team members. So Again, feel like don't feel like you have to um, create everything. Keep that list so that when you do have time and you have some a fraction of time that you can go in, dip in there and and create a recording for yourself. And remember that this is a living, breathing thing. You will want to go back over time and just make sure it's still relevant. Apps change um, the way they they look and all of that. So you do want to make sure that you're going back maybe a couple of times a year just to review the content that's in there to make sure that it is most up to date and the most relevant for you. Um, But anyway, in general, this is just a wonderful way to get what's inside of your head out and available for your team for so many things. And it really frees you up. You know, I'll go back to the example that I used about onboarding a new team member. We used to sit with our team members and go through mission and values and all of that We used to sit with them to load apps onto their phone. And then I had handed that off to Catherine, our office queen, and she did that manually with them. And then we were like, well, if we do this every time, why don't we just record a video about how to do it? Somebody can literally get access to this information before they start so that on their start date, they already have the apps. They already have an understanding of how we're using them and they can just be up and running and so so much faster and it doesn't take people time when it's not necessary. Because one of the ways that you get to leverage in your business is obviously delegating, but then then automating that process. So automating and delegating can go hand in hand. In this case, that's where that team training library helps. It helps you be available over and over and over again to your team members in the form of them being able to dip in and rewatch a topic if they feel confused or you know, or whatever. So it's just a really great way to begin to delegate tasks and processes inside of your business. So that is your sip for the week. I hope you found it really, really helpful. You have a wicked good week, good week, and I will see you the next time on the ships. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening to the Staging Sips podcast. If you love what you've learned here today, please take a minute to rate and review it so more staging business owners can find us. And if you want to learn more about how to market and grow your staging business more strategically, I'd love to see you join us inside of the Rethink You Accelerate Mentorship Program. It is open enrollment. and You can get more details at rethinkhomeinteriors.com forward slash rethink you. Would love to see you inside.